Potential signs of progress on an infrastructure deal out of D.C. Democrats and Republicans are still pretty far apart on how much they want to spend. But the White House said late last week that President Biden expects a revised proposal from a group of GOP senators by tomorrow. Joining us right now, White House Council of Economic Advisors member Jared Bernstein. And Jared, it's great to see you. This this talk of bipartisanship. How seriously do you take this? Because my understanding has been that bipartisanship will happen only if it can't get jammed through with all the Democratic votes. Does it look less likely that that can happen, that, that the Democrats will line up and, and go ahead with the plan as proposed by the administration? Well, first of all, great to see uh, the three of you as well. I think in this case, uh, particularly, Becky, uh, there's a real chance for bipartisanship. And the reason I say that is because I've known for years from my work on the Hill that there are Republicans who really want to do something on infrastructure. I mean, you've heard no less than Mitch McConnell talk about a bridge in, in his district that needs work. And that's something I've heard for a long time. Uh, some of these Republicans used to pull me over in the halls and say, look, I don't want anyone to see me talking to you, but uh, we need to get an infrastructure plan and our, our president doesn't have one. So. Uh, so uh, now we have a president who has a very elaborate one, and he is uh, just congenitally going to reach across the aisle and try to get cooperation on moving this forward. Jared, you're dodging my question, though. The, the president didn't reach across the aisle and move forward with something when he could get the Democratic votes. We have had several Democrats who have come on the show uh, in the House and the Senate, who have raised concerns about the package as proposed, it being maybe too progressive, cramming too many things in that they don't consider to be um, infrastructure, and to pay for it in ways that they're frustrated. I mean, just last week on Friday, we were talking with with uh, Congressman uh, Gottheimer, who, who's from New Jersey and who basically held a pen that said, you know, no salt, no dice. He wants the salt taxes uh, brought back, you know, the exemption for that. And he's not going to vote on this. And if you don't get the votes in the House, if you don't get the votes in the Senate, you can't do what the administration has planned. Well, I'm not exactly sure what you're pressing me on here, because what I'm trying to uh, see is, like, if you watch what the president is doing and what he's saying, he's talking to these very lawmakers trying to get to a deal. So, uh, you know, the uh, politics yeah, is the art here's, of Here's what I'm saying. My, what I'm saying is... What I'm saying is it, the deal is probably not going to look like the proposal that was put forth. It's uh, probably going to be one that has a lot less of that infrastructure. As Gottheimer said, he thinks there will be two bills, one that is infrastructure that Democrats and Republicans can agree on. And that's the traditional sort of infrastructure when you think of bridges and roads and tunnels and, and maybe some of the infrastructure for the Internet kind of wrapped in with that. The second would be the new definition of infrastructure, which is uh, infrastructure that really relates back to people and, and, and senior care and child care. He thinks there's going yeah. to be two bills, you, and, and that's the way to get it done. You think that's the case? I think that's a possible uh, scenario. I think the way to th look, I'm not going to negotiate legislative details here, and that's not my place anyway, as a member of the econ, not the legislative team. What I will say is there have been a couple of points that the president has been extremely firm on that should sort of sit above the whole discussion, which is one, inaction is completely unacceptable. So that's why he's trying to get to uh, a, a path forward, uh, which very well might involve particularly the kinds of machinations you're talking about. But the second is, of course, uh, no tax increases under 400,000. And I think here, uh, we do need to see anyone coming to the table talking about how they're going to help to support this plan. And uh, that's something the president has laid out uh, you know, quite elaborately with a set of you know, highly progressive tax changes that completely pay for both the jobs plan and the families plan over 15 years. Now, I think the other point you made, which is worth raising, is the more uh, broad definition of infrastructure that the president has consistently pushed. And here, I think you have to realize that when you're talking about lead in pipes, when you're talking about uh, millions of people who don't have access to broadband, when you're talking about trying to uh, invest in advanced manufacturing and electric vehicles, now, he views this as not just a matter of getting to the other side of the crisis, which the rescue plan is very much hastening, but building back better. And so those investments, uh, standing up a care economy for child and elder care, those are extremely important uh, to this president, and they're embedded in the jobs and families plans. 
Let's stick to some of the economic purview that you just brought up. We, we've been watching very closely this last week as the, the inflation numbers came in much stronger than expected, CPI, PPI. But also you talk to employers and, and you talk to restaurants and you, you hear where costs are going up, not only in what they have to pay, but in what they are now expecting customers to pay and in what they're going to have to pay to workers that are out there. How, how big of a problem is inflation, particularly when you talk about these trillions of dollars that we are still planning on spending uh, on, on top of the trillions we've already spent? Yeah, totally fair question. I mean, I think people, I've heard the discussion this morning, I was listening uh, to uh, discussions you've been having, and I, I think they've been informative, but I also think you have to remember where things were when we got here and what we needed to do. So of course we were down something like 10 million jobs and uh, the president uh, took action quickly and employment began accelerating. So we, we've added over, over half a million jobs per month over the past three months. Compare that to the prior three months where we were only adding 60,000. So yes, we have an economy that's climbing off the mat. We have, because of the action in the rescue plan, we have lots of uh, Americans with uh, shots in their arms and checks in their pockets. And yes, they're re-engaging with commerce and they're doing so with some real alacrity. And yes, that's putting some sectoral pressure on prices in, in various uh, parts of the economy. But I take, you know, here, here to me is a good sort of uh, uh, example of, of, of the issue. Airfares were up 10% in one month. They're still down 20% from their peak. So this is the kind of transitional movements from an economy that was on the mat to an economy that's back on the move. And that's what we're tracking uh, you know, as carefully as we can. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.